In this video, I'm going to talk about reporting in HoneyBook. This is a wonderful system, and I have another video that kind of compares HoneyBook to QuickBooks if you want to check that out. Um, but I'm going to show you what reporting you can do in the system natively. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to start and run successful creative businesses and client management system is a big part of that. I educate on a lot of different client management systems. So check out the rest of this playlist if you're still not sure exactly which one is right for you and whichever one you decide to use, I promise I have a discount code for you. If you do work, uh, go with HoneyBook, I have a 35% off link that I will put in the description of this video. So we're going to go into tools and under finances, we're going to check out reports. So this is Honestly, I like HoneyBooks reporting. I think it's done very well for what a native reporting system can be. My one issue is if not all of your payments come in through HoneyBook, then it's just not giving you a larger picture of your entire business. So it's not as helpful as something like QuickBooks, which can integrate with HoneyBook and any other payment systems that you're using. So if you also sell on Etsy, or if you also do individual projects, um, you can upload like one or two payments in here. But if you have an online shop, for instance, those payments are never going to come into HoneyBook. And so the reporting you're going to get is only for the payment that you're entering specifically in HoneyBook. And so for most of us who have larger businesses with multiple types of revenue streams, that's going to be a little bit limiting. And I would still recommend a system like QuickBooks for that. But if you do accept all of your payments through HoneyBook, then I do think it's a really good reporting platform and has very interesting insights that are actually going to really help your business. Either way, I definitely check these out because I think some of these insights are going to be helpful to you. So in your reports, you're going to see your success rate, which I think is really cool. So this will be the number of files that you sent versus the ones that booked. So you have like your contracts and invoices or your just invoices that you sent and whether they booked or not. I think that's a really helpful for just knowing your booking rate and how it's changing over time. Booking rate is obviously important. So, you know, if you want to make more money and book more clients, then you can either bring more clients in at your current booking rate, or you can actually book more of the clients that are already coming in as leads. So you have a couple different options there, but I think this will help you figure it out. Your booking rate, if it's too high, if you're booking every single client that you have as a lead, then I would say your prices are probably a little too low and it might be time to raise them. If you're booking about half of your clients, that's you know, it depends on your exact business and what you do. But for me as an invitation designer, that's typically a pretty good rate. In this project section, it's going to just give you kind of an overview of all the payments that you've collected, uh, the total value of all your bookings, any refunds, etc., which is a good way to just see the overall health of the business that is happening here at HoneyBook. And then this one's really helpful. So knowing where your best leads come from, and this is all thanks to when you set up your uh, contact form, you have this option of setting these different buckets. So your leads might come from online, they might come from a friend referral, they might come from another vendor in the wedding industry, they might come from a lot of different places. And this is where you can compare this data so that you can see which ones are getting the best leads. Because for instance, if you're advertising on Instagram, but Instagram's giving you a lot of crappy leads and all these leads that don't book or clients that you hate working with, then you maybe should not be investing money into advertising on Instagram. Maybe you should be investing money into working on your referral program, for instance. So I think this is really helpful. Like time to book is just kind of giving you an idea of how much time it takes to actually book these leads. Maybe it's good for your business if you book faster. Maybe it's not. Like sometimes I talk to people two years out from their wedding, so I'm not really booking them immediately, uh, but it's okay in that regard. If you're trying to book really quickly, then that's definitely um, a stat that you want to pay attention to. HoneyBook is going to help with kind of automating some of the tasks. So even if the time to book is a little bit longer, you're not necessarily investing your time. You're not worrying about, oh, I need to check in with them because you have an automation set up that automatically checks in with them every week or something. Or if you're looking at time to book and it's too long, then maybe that's an idea to set up that uh, reminder every seven days, every 10 days, etc., so that you can close that time to book a little bit. 
conversion rate will just be how many leads you're getting from a certain source that end up booking. If you're finding you're getting a ton, a ton of leads from Instagram, for instance, but none of them end up booking, then maybe that's a sign as to how to adjust your marketing, or it's a sign of, Hey, why am I getting those bad leads on Instagram? And what can I do to kind of change that? So those leads are better. And then where are you getting better leads that almost always book? If every wedding planner lead books, then that's showing you like, Hey, maybe I could reach out to some more wedding planners and try to expand this a little bit because I'm spending all the time I'm spending on those leads is, you know, converting into a sale. And then leads value, of course, if you have a lot of different packages and you're wanting to see where, where your most luxury clients are who are booking your highest package, that's a great place to check that out. So this is just going to give you so much helpful data that actually can be used in your business. It's not just showing you um, the profit or the number of clients. It's giving you like where those are coming from and what's valuable about them in a lot of different ways. And then down here, you can just download your monthly and yearly analytics report, which is really awesome and will provide a little bit more data if you're into the whole spreadsheet thing. <laughs> and can manipulate that data to find more information. You can use um, all of these like lead sources. You can use the value of the leads, the conversion rate, the time to book, all of that information um, to find out even more about your the health of your business. Also under finances, you will see payment expenses and profit and loss. So these are all right here and your QuickBooks integration is going to be on this tab as well. The QuickBooks integration with HoneyBook is better than with some other systems because HoneyBook is its own payment processor. So everything's going to go into QuickBooks with the fees already kind of taken out of it or establish um, however they need to be established in QuickBooks. So you're not going to get a different amount in HoneyBooks in the invoice and in QuickBooks in the invoice because they are doing all of that processing here before it goes to QuickBooks. If you're using a different system that's integrated with QuickBooks that isn't its own payment processor, then you might have a little bit of an issue there are going to be payments from your clients and you'll be able to filter through them here and just see all of those as well as when you're getting paid on them, which is so helpful. Expenses are things that you'll have to upload on your own, but if all of your work is coming in, all of your payments are coming into HoneyBook, then maybe it's valuable to go ahead and do this. Um, it's going to take a little bit more work than say in QuickBooks where you can just connect your credit card and all those expenses are already in there. Uh, but it just depends on how granular you want to get with this and what other systems you're trying to use. If you don't accept most of your payments or almost all of your payments through HoneyBook, I wouldn't recommend it as an accounting tool solely. I would definitely recommend getting Wave or QuickBooks or one of the other popular accounting platforms and integrating this into it as opposed to um, trying to use this as a full tool because it's just not meant to be an accounting tool. And so some of the reporting is, is really good, but it's not going to... It's just not going to scratch the itch that your accountant wants it to scratch. I promise. You can upload expenses in here and then track them across a bunch of different categories. And then your profit and loss will take the expenses and payments that you've been getting and just include these on here. It's a very simplistic view, as you can see here. You can, of course, expand these categories. And in expenses, there are a lot of different categories you can choose from. So it's not to say that there are aren't, uh, you know, these aren't the only categories that you're going to see, uh, but this is a very simplistic view of your profit and loss. It's not giving you your balance sheet. It's not giving you full breakdowns, etc. but it is a good way to generally keep track of everything that's coming in and out of HoneyBook. All right. So again, you can find all of these tools up here under reports and then payments, expenses, and profit and loss are all under this bookkeeping tab. Whichever one you click on will take you there. So while I do think that HoneyBook can do some good reporting and gives you some information you should definitely be looking at, especially about where these leads are coming from. And then if you're able to uh, parse through these spreadsheets of the yearly report, they do have a lot of information in them. However, I don't think it is standing alone as an accounting tool unless maybe you have a lot of very simple expenses, very simple payments, and they're all coming in through HoneyBook and you don't mind adding each expense alone. To me, it's not worth um, saving the money on QuickBooks or something if I have to spend two, three hours a month entering my expenses. And then if I do those manually, there's so much more room for error versus a system that's going to pull all of that information automatically. But love this reports tab, even if I'm not as obsessed with the bookkeeping. Um, and they do have that QuickBooks integration that you can check out in a different video. 
let me know what questions you have about HoneyBook. If you're still just citing on client management systems, I have a lot of comparisons here on my channel and other tutorials if you're ready to dive in and set up some of your projects.